Uh, joining us right now with more, the uh, best-selling author, Pulitzer Prize finalist, Garrett Graff. His new book is out. It's called UFO, the inside story of the U.S. government's search for alien life here and out there. And it just so happens it hits the stores tomorrow. So congratulations on that. Thank you. Maybe a quick comment on what you just saw, this whole idea of the whistleblower and whether they get him in a skiff. And what, have you been following that story and yeah. everything comes out of it? I, I've obviously been following the story very closely. Okay. Um, you know, uh, to me, part of the challenge is that it is possible uh, and I would say probably even likely that David Grush is telling the truth about a large chunk of what he has said. It doesn't necessarily always lead to the conclusion that I think the public and perhaps members of Congress are concluding from what he's saying. Meaning? Um, so, for instance, uh, the idea that the U.S. government has a UFO crash retrieval program. Right. That's actually quite true. We know that. One of the things I do in my book is I trace that back. Uh, it's actually existed for almost 100 years. It, it goes back to what was originally called the Foreign Technology Division at the Army Air Corps in World War I. It's a unit that goes around the world and hoovers up sort of crashed UFOs, unknown flying objects. Right, it's but it doesn't mean there's alien bodies uh, to be discovered. It, it doesn't necessarily mean to... that there are alien bodies. Right. I do believe also that that unit has likely recovered technology. It doesn't know what it is. One of the ch one of the challenges, uh, one of the questions that I have about David Grush's testimony, for instance, is when he talks about the government believing that it has recovered non-human technology, is who believes that? Is that a member of this UFO crash retrieval program yeah. at ASIC, the Air and Space Intelligence Center in Wright-Patterson Air Force Base in Dayton, Ohio? Or is that a broader conclusion, for instance, by multiple intelligence agencies with what the intelligence community would call high or medium confidence, which are sort of levels of belief and conclusion? All right. More broadly, tell us uh, how you got interested in this book. I mentioned you're a Pulitzer finalist, and, you know, that was for Watergate, right? I mean, you've done a lot in your career. You've um, you know, well, I, I, for lack of a better term, mainstream politics yep. and all the rest. But now, UFOs, and you're interested in it, why? So I come to the subject for the same reason that you uh, and News Nation have been yeah. covering the subject so much this year. Serious people are talking seriously about this subject today. Um, I got interested in it. My background is as a national security writer. I sort of have covered the war on terror, counterterrorism, yeah. cybersecurity, the American presidency, the Cold War. And there was a moment in 2020 um, when John Brennan gave an interview to an a economist blogger named Tyler Cowen. Former CIA director. Former CIA director and former White House uh, Homeland Security advisor, right. where he says, effectively, there are things out there that puzzle us, that we don't know what they are, and they may represent something that may be a different type of life. Hmm. And to me, you know, John Brennan had spent almost a decade at the top of the U.S. intelligence community. There can't be that many mysteries in John Brennan's life. If he wanted to know the answer to something, he was able to get it. So the fact that he's right. coming out of government and he's saying, this stuff puzzles me, to me, says this is something worthy of diving into. Which you did, and you've written a whole book about it, and now that you've done that, is your conclusion or is your belief simply that, you know, there's there's more out there than just us? There's other intelligent life out there? Are you pretty sure of it? Uh, I, I think part of what we have seen is, so what I try to do in the book is pull together two threads that are usually treated separately. One, the U.S. military's hunt for UFOs here mm -hmm. over the last 80 years, since sort of the dawn of the flying saucer age in 1947 as well as the evolving astronomy and science around the search for extraterrestrial uh, in life across the universe. And what seems increasingly clear over the last decade is that the math is almost certainly on the side of the aliens. <laughs> that there is, uh, what we now understand is that almost every star in the universe likely has planets. And that actually about a sextillion of them are likely habitable by life as we understand it. So the odds are there's something else. But it could, it could be so far away that we'll, we'll never see it. 
um, could have could have happened already, right? Or? Yes, and that's one of the things that like is really mind bending when you get into the math of this is that we're actually a really young solar system in a really old universe. Right. So <laughs> we're about four and a half billion years old in our solar system, uh, across about fourteen billion years in. Uh, the wider universe. So it's possible that you could have tr incredible advanced civilizations. I mean, civilizations that existed for hundreds of millions, even a billion right. years. But they're gone now. That we have missed right. by a billion or two or four or six billion years. Um, now, all of that said, though, that doesn't mean to me that the UFO problem, the Uf UAP problem here on Earth isn't worth solving. Because right. part of what I think is also true is that we understand now that there is a phenomena here that we don't understand. And so to me, there are incredibly interesting and meaningful and insightful answers that could be unraveled in that about atmospheric science, meteorological science, astronomical right. science, and about the basics of physics that we don't currently understand. It's interesting because to your point, more serious people are having serious conversations, so maybe we'll start to get some of those answers um, at some point. But Garrett, good luck with the book. Thanks so much. Thanks. thanks so much for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.